60. Opportunity time now for Bristow. Finish 161. Thank you. Oh. 80. Eric Require 161. Both on the same finish, but Bristol favourite. Trying at 19s. 97. John, you require 161. He's had some big finishes. He needs this one. Trouble 20. One hundred. Eric, you require 64. For the fifth set. Trouble 16. 16 now for double. Double 16. Set two, Eric Bristol. Bristol goes in front, 3 2. And it's at this time we will be taking a short break. Both the players leaving we're the now stage. We'll have a short break. The players will be back in five minutes to continue this tremendous match. That's the latest stage. Still, Eric Bristol, general. It's a good advantage point for Bristol to come back, leading 3 2. Entourage guiding the players off the stage. And while the players take their short break, we'll talk some more to the 1983 World Professional Champion, Keith Deller. Keith, how important psychologically is it at this point for Bristow to now go off for that break, 3-2 ahead? It's a big difference because um, when John comes back, he knows he needs the next set to make a free all when Eric knows a 4-2 lead just gives him a little bit more breather. But John's suddenly got it all together, hasn't he? He didn't start so well. His, his form really fluctuated in the, in, in the first sets, but then he was ahead two sets to one. Well, I think the big question point was the second set. You know, again, I said earlier that the early sets are important, and then John went ahead 2-1, and obviously the pressure was back on Eric. Do the players like this interval? I mean, is this doing them any good? They've actually had to come off stage. They've got yeah. Eric certainly is wound up, isn't he? But what happens now in this next five minutes? Well, I think it all depends if you've been behind and then you start getting ahead and you start buzzing and your confidence. I think you'd rather stay on there. Where well, if you're behind, the little break just give you a breather and think, right, now let's go back and try and get back in the game. So you would think the players would prefer to carry on in, in general terms rather than have a break? I think once you get into a rhythm you think, well, let's carry on and keep playing. So the guy who's ahead wants to carry on, the guy who's behind <laughs> wants to come off and have a few minutes to collect his thoughts. That's right, yeah. Let's just look back, because as I said, John, John's form certainly seemed to fluctuate during, during that, uh, those first five sets, and that was illustrated in the second set, it's the third leg, and he needs 101 to win the leg, and I think go two legs to one ahead, but his final arrow, as you see here, is very wayward. <laughs> Go out there, Finlo. Oh, interesting point now. One and tops. Take the leg. He wants tops. 66. Skewed it. Eric, you require 28. Doubles for Thank Doe, you. they say. Shh, shh. Eric wants double 14. Game shot on the third leg to so Eric took the leg, but the important point there, I think, was how wayward John's arrow was for that, for that double 20. He was way off it, wasn't he? I think John knew the importance of that second set. He needed it badly, and uh, I think the double 20 was a bit rushed. You know, He knew that he had one chance, and he, had to, he needed that set. All right, well, let's look at another moment now. It's the third set, and this is the moment that brought the house down and really had you <laughs> cursing and cussing <laughs> up here in the studio because it was when John Lowe needed 170 to win the leg and go into a two-set-to-one lead and also achieve the highest possible three-dart out. <laughs> like you can bear to look. <laughs> That's a three-dart shot out. Thank you. It would take the set. It will also bring the house down if he can hit it, and it would be the biggest out shot of the tournament. Yes, bullseye for a 170. Yeah. Magic! Oh, yes! We thought we'd seen it all. We haven't. Low six a 170 for a £1,000. The biggest out shot this week. And he goes two sets to one ahead. Absolute excellent. 
ecstasy here for those fans. What a fantastic shot. And what a time to do it. <laughs> yeah, it was a great, yeah, great um, shot. Obviously, uh, I was the only person that maybe didn't want to see it. And also Eric, you know, uh, we were sharing the prize. But to win the set as well, it was a good psychological boost for John. But there was so much on that, wasn't there? It, was only, it wasn't only winning, winning the set and going into a two-set to one lead, but he knows there's the thousand pounds. It's the highest possible three-dart checkout. Well, John knows he'll share the money. <laughs> you know, it's a great shot. And uh, again, under pressure, which is even harder. But the effect on Eric has been that he's come back and he's taken the next two yeah. sets so now he's ahead again three sets to two well eric i think is now beginning to buzz a bit you know he's bouncing around and he's now back in the game and knows now that also to go ahead he's putting the pressure back on john sure. he, obviously as a as a fellow professional and a former world champion you're closer to to low and bristol than other people would be we, we have this image of, of eric of being a bit brash and, and uh, always saying what he's going to do and how confident he is. Well, you've been closer than others. Well, is he really like that? Is, is that the sort of man that he is when in the private moments between the players? No, Eric, I must admit, is a very good bloke. And, um, you know, when he's playing darts, he's there to win and he wants to win. And, um, you know, he'll still do anything. He'll try and put your face saying, I'm now going to beat you off. And, you know, but it's only because he wants to win the tournament. But off the dartboard, he's a different person. I mean, he sat in this studio last night after his semi-final and said he was going to win and virtually it didn't matter who he played in the final, he, he was going to be the victor. Well, you know, you've got to think that you're going to win the tournament. You know, if, if Eric was to come here and say, well, I don't think I'll win, then it wouldn't be right. He, he thinks he'll win the tournament and, uh, you know, it's just his opinion. Obviously, John would, be the other, John would be saying the same. I think I'm going to win. But does that get to the, does that get to the other player? To be John Lowe and to, and to see Eric and hear Eric saying those sort of things, can you blank it out from your mind or does it begin to irritate? I think you have to. You know, you can just say, OK, well, if Eric said it to me, I'd just say, OK, Eric, it's your opinion, you know, but, you know, if you ignore it, but some players sometimes don't. All right, let's just look ahead then. We've got uh, the players coming back in a, in a few moments. Bristow's up three sets to two. How do you now see this final resolving? Well, I think uh, the next set could be the talent point. If Eric goes four two up, then I think John's got a lot to do. If he pulls about the free all, then it could be a classic finish. Well, Keiki, thanks very much. Classic finish, that's certainly what we'd like to see. Let's remind you, Bristow's ahead by three sets to two. And we move out into the auditorium here at Jolly's. The last time that this venue will be used for this World Professional Championship. Just over a thousand people inside the hall, and you can't get a seat for love and the money. And they've all got their favorites. There's the trophy at the side of the stage. Looks more like the FA Cup this year. And the World Professional Championship trophy. The players about to come out. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's to rejoin our final, would you welcome back, please? First of all, Eric Bristow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Lowe. Well, Keith Della talking about confidence. There's one thing certain, it's this man with confidence. He's taken a few practice starts just to settle himself in. And as the sets have gone, low, leading 2-1 in the early stages. Now 3-2 behind. There is...